Welcome back to the coverage of YCS London 2018. We have now arrived in the semi-finals. Only four players remain where 1,625 started playing. We got a former YCS champion against the reigning national champion. This is going to be good. In the red corner, we got Ping Chiao playing Trickster this weekend. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Calm. Did anything change after your last feature match? Not really, no. Although, unfortunately, everyone now knows what I'm playing. Well, yes, but uh, he already knew what you, what you were playing, so I, I didn't give anything away. Mm -hmm. that's, that's okay, though. How are you feeling about the matchup, Altergeist versus Trickster? Uh, to be honest, this matchup... I've already I played several older guys on the way here. The matchup, I feel I'm okay with the matchup. So we'll see how it goes. I, right. I don't want to comment any more than this. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to give any strategy away. All right, please have a seat over there. His opponent, Typhoon Bayrakta, the German national champion 2018. Typhoon, hi. How are you feeling going into the feature match? Um, I've been here before, so it's not nothing new. But Is it any different uh, comparing yeah, it to the national championship? And we are running in and stuff, so that's different. All right. The game is still the same. How are you feeling about the matchup? Um, I've played Trickster before for a long time at several YCS and at Nationals. I don't want to dismiss that deck because it can be hard. Their monsters are bigger than Altergeist monsters and they just swap them out, freeze my back first. So just, let's just see how it goes. All right, let's just see how it goes. Please have a seat over here. Um, guys, we're ready to do the die roll. So please have a crack at that. It's going to be a high roll. Uh, Ping rolled an eight. Typhoon's got... A four, that is a four. So Ping is allowed to... <laughs> he is starting, not that surprising, I guess. <laughs> All right, starting and smiling. Guys, with that, the stage has been set. Our charges are now going to get at work to prepare these players for the match. With that, let's take you over to Dom Galizia and Tom Payne, our casters for the round. Hello and welcome back. Yes, thank you, Ollie. We're here ready for the semi-final, the top four, Tom. And looking at the field, there's actually four people from four different countries so we had have four different decks they do indeed so let's have a look at that a little bit closer we can see that um ping is playing the trick star deck our last englishman yep in the event. yep tafen barakta is playing the altergeist deck mm -hmm. bodan who we just saw in the previous feature match is playing the uh, danger dark world deck yep and his opponent, Mirko Zanelli from Italy, is playing a Sky Striker Pure deck. So, four, after all these rounds, we're in the top four now. There's four people from four different countries, and they are playing four different decks. That's a pretty good field, I think. How about you? That's pretty cool. I quite like so, it. We, we've seen Ping. We've seen some Altergeist uh, plays as well before in the previous feature matches. How do you feel this feature match is going to go? I think... It's fairly even. Uh, the dice roll helps Trickstar get all their stuff set up in the first instance. Um, so getting down some of the powerful search spells before the Altergeist deck can set up. The Altergeist deck also takes a turn or two to set up. So if the Trickstar can sort of rush it, that's quite good for them. And getting to go first definitely helps. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that before. It's almost like it needs to establish itself for a turn first. Yeah. So... With that in mind, I think we're just about ready to head to the table. So, we'll take you over to the feature match. So, as you can see, Ping Zhao is in the red corner on the left-hand side of your screen. And Taifun Barakta from Germany is on the right-hand side of your screen in the blue corner. And they're just loading those hands in for you now. I think they're both excited as well. They've both been around a while. Oliver mentioned that um, Ping is a previous YCS champion. We spoke about it briefly. And he Tafen's must been in the final of a couple as well. Yeah, Tafen has definitely been around as, as well. So how do you think they're both feeling, Tom? They're both excited. They don't want to get ahead of themselves. They I know they've got a big me, match I in front. I just want to look at my hand and think, think what it's going to do, see what my opponent's going to do. Um, and that's a good handshake there, ready to start the match, I think. So here we go. Ping says, please, 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 please play Ash. Uh, given the Gamma in his hand, but no Ash forthcoming from Tafen. Uh, well, that's one of, the, one of the most unreasonable things you can do to someone, really, is uh, 
they can ash you and then you chain the gamma and then you take negate the ash and then take another card out of your hand with the side frame gear omega uh, but that's not going to happen just yet so here we see he's already made that terraforming play trickstar light stages to the field he summons the candina and how's yeah. Taifun, how's Taifun feeling about that? Taifun, he's got the personal spoofing, uh, which he's going to have to rely on to start his engine. Um, Ping's got the Ash. Uh, he's, in fact, got two Ash. Uh, so Taifun's going to be forced to use a Solemn Strike on that. Basically. Okay. I think that's So that's what you're envisioning that's how this I'm is going to go. That's happening uh, in the next couple of turns. Uh, so Ping, without that terraforming, would have had a very sad-looking hand. But with the terraforming, his hand is... Pretty live. Yeah, it's, it's pretty live. I mean, that's all, all Trickstar really need to get going is the one act, one Candina, one Field Spell, or one terraforming. And I have to say, Tom, this is quite something here. There's a, there's a massive crowd building now. Yeah, it's pretty great to it's, see. You know, the chairs have been full up all the way through this uh, event, but... Now I there's think people standing as well. I think there's a top four, you know, the guys are enjoying it. There's a home player if you like yeah that's pretty nice too and it yeah so Tafin draws Tafin's drawn the protocol as well which is pretty nice for him and we can see he sets four to the spell and trap card zone so one of the nice things for the trick star player in this matchup is the field spell forcing out back row um, so he can just say you know you got to activate that now use it or lose it um, and that's fine for Tafin he just flips it up doesn't cost him anything to flip it. Um, so all in all, I'd say Tavon is going to get his engine going and Ping's not really going to be able to stop it. So um, he's just having a think. He's just looking through those face downs and there we see the... Uh, so my guess is the spoofing. Yep, that you mentioned. Followed by the ash and then the strike. And you can't chain anything to strike. Counter trap. It's a counter trap. Well, there is one counter trap now you can activate from your hand. Red reboot. Absolute great card. Pretty strong card. Not going to argue with that. We've seen it in recent months and events take a, see a lot of play. Yeah. So we've got the uh, multi faker now. Nice thing that makes all the guys way better than they would be otherwise is that multi faker doesn't actually have to be in hand while the trap card is being activated. So, so it looks like Tafen's getting going here, Tom. Yeah. So we got the multi faker ready resolved, and then once one multi faker resolves, more more tend to follow because the multi faker can search a silk witness. I mean, in this case, Tafen's already got a silk witness on the field, so it can search something else. But now you can bounce the multi-faker with the Silkatus to add back Licorice. And have you played much of the Altergeist deck yourself, Tom? Yeah. I asked you earlier about the Trickstar deck, Yeah, I think. I've played a little bit with... I play a little bit of everything. Um, so the Altergeist deck, again, like in a situation once you're, you're set up, it starts to favor you quite heavily. Um, so I would say Tafun's pretty happy right now. That now that he's set up, he's also got that Imperial Order, which is gonna, which is gonna begin to. Well, I mean, Imperial Order is a bit of a weird one in this because you can't really afford to be taking, uh, paying damage, uh, paying life points with Imperial Order. I mean, he's gonna have to play it, but he's gonna start to have to pay, to use the Imperial Order. Indeed. So I'm not sure what what else uh, Ping's got in his hands to follow up with. Unfortunately for him, it does look like he's got a couple of spell cards. So he's got the one Ash, one... Ah, he's got Scapegoat. That's a really unfortunate draw for him under the Imperial Order. So he's got, yeah, Call by the Grave, Scapegoat, all of which not ideal under this Imperial Order, going to be shutting down a load of his spell cards. So it looks like a solid position for Tafen, and obviously Imperial Order, that saw a lot of play in recent events as well. Yeah. And it's not going to sh be shutting down Tafen one bit. And that extra strike is in a very strong pickup as well. So the only real interaction that Ping has got is the solitary Ash Blossom. But realistically, I Does think... Does he have the, to uh, use that at a specific moment, do you think, Tom, in order to stay with momentum? I think... I think he's... 
just in a lot of trouble, regardless of when he uses it. So okay. we can see the Marionetta come down. Marionetta will search trap and set it to his field. You can't ash that. I mean, that would probably be the best thing to ash, but you're not actually allowed to ash that because it, it doesn't add a card to your hand. It doesn't summon a monster to your field. It sets a trap from the deck, uh, which ash cannot negate. So, yeah, I would say he's just kind of kind of stuck here. That what that side frame gear gamma might come into play. Uh, realistically, though, Taven's got the ash, uh, not the ash, the strike. He's got the um, now the protocol as well. Between those two things, I would say it's 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 looking a bit grim for Ping. So he's up against it here, definitely in he's game definitely one. Definitely up against it, yeah. And Taifun's probably feeling a lot more comfortable, as you said. He's got that face-up Imperial, Imperial Order. Imperial Order is the, is the king, yeah. Yep. Not really much you can say about Imperial Order if you draw lots See of spells. See what you did there, Tom. What, the king? Yeah. I suppose it is the king, yeah. I didn't, but now I do. <laughs> <laughs> I like Ping like, forcefully just putting his monster back in the graveyard and saying, put that back. Yeah, he's saying, look, well, hold on a second. Hold on just a second, yeah. You're not doing that yet. I mean, it's, it's not really optimal, this, because he can just chain the spoofing to put back the... Uh, put back the... whatever its name is, Marionetta. Um, so Ping's going to go into the deck? Yeah, I mean, he's just kind of throwing away two cards to stop a, a Silkwit is coming down. This is stop a silk just coming down, but Tafen can just activate the um, activate a trap, being the protocol in his draw phase, and then he'll be back online again. He'll get a load of all Skies monsters out again. So it's re so it's really Typhoon in a solid position right now. Very solid. He's got the Imperial Order. So he pays. The Ping's cost. only hope is sort of some sneaky burn damage at some point. Um, but with the ability of is that Typhoon, protocol now flipping? yeah, so Typhoon can use the spoofing to search a copy of Kun Query, which will negate an attack as well. So between his ability to negate attacks and his ability to, um, you know, he's going to have ability to negate attack, bounce a monster, negate a spell or trap. I mean, Ping doesn't even have any; he can't even activate any spells anyway, and negate a monster effect. It's looking pretty. It's looking pretty, pretty hard good for, for Typhoon right for now. Ping he must be feeling confident. Yes. Yeah, I think he's pretty happy. Uh, and there we go. And it's straight to Ping's game two. Typhoon one. swiftly taking game one there, Tom. It's very swift. Very strong position. We thought it might take a turn or two to get going, but it seemed he seemed to have momentum right from the off. Yeah, I mean, he, did, he, he took his, you know, he, he got going in his opponent's turn, but that Imperial Order really, really shut him down. Yeah, it's and his hand was full of spell cards, so. Interestingly, if Ping manages to make it through this match and faces that danger deck that we saw, the Trickstar deck has a surprisingly very strong matchup against the danger deck. Okay. So the FTK win condition doesn't actually really work against a copy of Lycoris on the board because Lycoris will be doing burn damage to your opponent whilst they are... Um, whilst they're trying to do their sort of infinite loop of bouncing the graph every time the... Dark World goes back to your hand, you take 400 and you're only doing 500 to your opponent. So if you've lost some life points before that, you're only doing 100 more to them. So it doesn't actually work with a Licorice on the field. Uh, it's a surprisingly bad matchup. I think we're going to see Luke. We're going to pass through to Luke, who's in the crowd with the fans here. Hello, so I'm here in the crowd. I'm here with some of Ping's friends, one of Ping's friends here. Tell us, how do you think he's feeling after that first loss? Um, based on his opening hand, it's not ideal because he's going to draw the Skystroke engine. But it's, it's pretty good for going first because the opponent got like improved order and pretty chunks of trap. It's really, really perfect to going first. Yeah. But he only got a plus in the first turn, but he can't manage to do any disruption in the opponent's turn. So he managed to set all the set cards, including the daddy strike. Yeah, how do, you, how, how do you think he's feeling going into the second game, though? Do you think he's nervous? You know, how, how, is, he, how is he okay playing from a one defeat? He may be a bit frustrating because it's a bit tougher to than he expects to manage well because he's a pretty skilled player. Mm -hmm. And he got an upper hand first round against Outergast, which have really rely on the first game. Okay, all right, thank you very much. 
let's see how the next game goes. Yeah, he was just giving us a little bit of a rundown as to how the crowd were uh, feeling in regards to the vibe um, in between the side deck and Tafun taking game one. Yeah, and these guys have they've definitely been active with their side decks, Tom. What do we expect to see from those side decks? I expect a few copies of Twin Twister from Ping. Yep. I don't know what else, if I'm going to be honest. It doesn't look like his side deck is fully geared for this matchup. Okay. He could choose to go second and side in some evenly matched. But I'm not sure you really want to go second against uh, Altergeist. Altergeist. But you never know. Uh, and on the side of Tafun, maybe an Inspector Border? Uh, he, uh, Ping's definitely going second. There's two evenly matched in his hand. Um, so evenly matched a card that Altergeist were significantly scared of enough to want to have some specific counter cards for it, like maybe Wiretap. Uh, maybe that's a good judgment. trap. That yeah, it is a good trap. Negates other traps. Yep. Ah, hang on a minute. Ping's going first, and he's and he's got two evenly matched. I guess we'll see how that pans out for him. It's not something I would do. Bit unorthodox. It is a bit unorthodox. I mean, you can't really set the evenly matched because evenly matched can get eaten by uh, Silpatus. But maybe he just thought he wanted to side out some stuff like uh, like maybe the Psy frames and maybe it's just better to have the evenly matched anyway, just in case his board gets cleared. I mean, my issue with it is that the terraforming, you know, if you want to set the field spell up, that field spell is not going to leave the field ever, uh, which means you're not going to be able to use that evenly matched from your hand. So maybe he's just not going to use the field spell here. So that is the case. So maybe he's just hoping to take Tafen by surprise with this evenly matched. And honestly, it would take me by surprise as well if my opponent went first and then flipped an evenly matched. Uh, I mean, Tafen's got the Mind Crush face down, which may bait out. You know, it's a bit of a weird one. I mean, maybe, maybe he might see through it. It would be weird for Ping to, like, bluff evenly matched going second. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So maybe he'll just say... Maybe you really do have evenly matched. I have no idea. I don't know what will be going through Tafen's head when Ping says, enter battle phase, end battle phase, whether Tafen will think there is actually an evenly matched in his hand. So it could be quite a cunning plan here from... Uh this is going to be a bit of a strange one because, I mean, if Tafen does do it, then it will be a pretty big swing. But, I mean, if he doesn't, he'll just lose. The evenly so matched will just end the so game. here we go. He draws... But he might use it on engage. But he's going to see the evenly matched. So <laughs> oh straight no. away that mind crush and oh, but he's going to just show. He's going to look at me. Look, I have two evenly matched. What are you going to do? Um, I mean, Taven can do nothing about this. So that was a powerful uh, mind crush. It but was in a the end, mind crush. But the evenly matched is coming match. down he's here. Banish three of his sets. That is brutal. That is a real good position for Peng. He's really pulled that back even after the mind crush, as you've said. And he's got the pot of desires as well, so he's going to be drawing additional cards. My only issue with the situation is that Peng has used his battle phase, but other than that, I'd say he's pretty happy. Um, the marionette is not going anywhere with the ash in hand. He's got terraforming to kickstart his engine and then pot of desires. Yeah, so he's got some real good opportunity here. Yeah, I would say Tafen is, 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 is somewhat blown away by that. I would be pretty What's he thinking away. right now? He did, would he have read that at all? With oh, that? God, no. Someone so siding in evenly matched. It's really, really panned out for him, and it just panned out completely perfectly because the only answer in Tafen's deck to a turn one Shizuku with a number of spells engraved is the Melaseek. If he doesn't have it, no other card will actually attack over his um so he activates the light monster. stage yeah as long as he's not banished too he, many candinas did he call uh, by the grave and oh Escape. god that's a scapegoat yeah i would say the scapegoat my guess is scapegoat will, will prompt a concession when it gets flipped during during tafen's next turn let's see how that goes tom you've been pretty accurate with the prediction so far must be said uh yeah but we can see 
ping as ever, speedily playing through his deck. He is. He, he, is, he is a speedy player. Yeah, he is. It's a. It's a very. Um, this is just not what you want to see from Tafen's side. So he's, he's got no cards left, even with that. He imperial draws that order. imperial order. Though. I I think that is uh, too little, too late. Some might say. So he sets that imperial order. <laughs> that was just nuts. The fact that the engage Summons was the there to bait the mind crush as well. <laughs> to say, yeah, I'm well going to show you my evenly matched, and then I'm going to play it. I'm do you think he just kind of? First. Do you think Ping just kind of leads him into it perfectly? Uh, I mean, if he doesn't have the mind crush, it doesn't really matter. Okay. It's better for him that he, um, you know, if, if he didn't have the mind crush and the evenly match just went through and he kept the two engages, that would have been even more nuts. But, yeah, I, at this point. So we see Typhoon setting that Altergeist trap from Typhoon his... Typhoon will probably just sort of give it to him at this point. Ping taking the risk here, so... Melisic is just going to pick up one of his back rows at random. One of them is the scapegoat. Um, so I guess we will we'll see if he hits it. Yep. So he's I mean he's got to hit it really to have any chance of staying in this game. But he's only got a one in four. So we're going to see the dice roll. We're going to I I just pick them to be honest. But some people like to roll dice. Ah. Maybe he's he's just hoping scapegoat isn't there. It's a fair, fair call, and he's not even bothered to attack. <laughs> so Tafin's looking through his extra deck now. There's the Link Karibo. I don't know what the reasoning is for not attacking. Yeah, Tafin just having all the answers here. Ping's just checking that if he uses the Call by the Grave that whether Marionetta will go to the graveyard or not. And I think it does. I think it sends as part of the effect. But effects, just having effects will try and um, try and resolve as much as they can. Yeah, they're just having a discussion about that, it looked like. But they're proceeding with the match. Yeah, I mean, Ping did, did, didn't want to use the call by the grave anyway. But this end phase scapegoat should... It might just be enough for uh, Tafen to... Uh, resign this game but maybe not and the crowd like that one as well I mean they knew it was there yep. you know you can't really react as excitedly to something no. when you already know it's there so he's activating that Imperial Order yeah I mean Ping knows what his opponent's set his other his opponent's other set is so he's feeling confident now. He's starting to... So he can just pick it off with a Nightmare Phoenix if he wants to. Trade you know, trade his card for a new one and a Nightmare Phoenix. Um, I think he might just be able to swing for game with Boral Sword. Maybe not. I'll have to work He's having it out. a think. He's having a think. Let him have a think. I think that's okay. Yeah, I think he's due that. He's due the opportunity. He, he hasn't really been taking his time no, that much. No, he's definitely not been uh, he's not taking been excessively long or anything of the sort. He's just going through his graveyard again. Tafen patiently sat waiting there. Yeah. Does, he looks calm and collected. I feel like I feel like Nightmare Phoenix on the set. It, it appeals to me right now, but maybe something will appeal to Ping even more. Um. Ping's thinking about activating... Okay, now I'm feeling. It does not appeal to ping that much. So here we see the tax going through. Oh, I thought he had another monster a card in his hand, but I was wrong. So yeah, that makes makes perfect sense. He just sense. added something back, Tom. What was that? That was a Candina. When you do direct damage with Lily Bell, you can add any trickstar monster from your graveyard to your hand. Interacts very nicely with um, Licorice. I should probably know their names better, you know? But I don't for some reason. Interacts very nicely with Licorice uh, because it just... Is that a Link 4? No, that's Look a Link 3. 
There we go. There's unicorn. Unicorn. Get rid of all of <coughs> Tafen's cards, taking no chances. Yeah, so it interacts so really Ping nicely. is definitely in command here. Oh, yeah. He's I mean, really only started to take away all of those resources. One manifestation, and that can only bring back Marionetta. Um, so what's going through Tafin's hand here? Is he going to pick up his cards and go to game three? or? Um, very possibly. I don't know what he's drawn, but it, that would be my guess. As it to looks what like a multi-faker. Yes. I mean, he can activate it. Oh, he's just going to normal summon it. Oh, I see. Straight to so battle he's going to normal summon it, swing, use the manifestation. Don't really know why he wouldn't... Oh, he knows there's a reincarnation in hand. Okay, that makes some amount of sense. But Call by the Grave will say no to that plan. And there you go. And that's game two. Game two. We're going to head straight to Luke, who's in the crowd. Uh, sorry, no. That is... I think we are planning yeah. on heading to Luke. Luke, Maybe not are you with us? Luke. Are you standing by? Let's go, Luke. And let's go, Luke. Thank you very much, guys. I'm here with one of Tayfun's teammates, Joshua Schmidt. Uh, he's talking to someone in the minute, but I'm going to get him. Joshua, how do you think Tayfun's feeling right now? Uh, I think he's feeling confident because Trickstar is a good matchup. And he's going first game three, so that's it's just the optimal situation to be in. So obviously he won, he won the first game, so it's you, you were even saying to me during this game that He's not necessarily feeling too good right now, but he's going to feel great going into that last game. Yeah. Does, is he good? Is he a good kind of guy under pressure? Do you think he's feeling any pressure right now? I mean, he's been there before. He's won an event before, so uh, I don't think he's feeling too pressured right now. Of course, you're always nervous, but I think he can handle it. All right. Thank you very much, Joshua. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Luke. Yeah, Josh one one. Decent amount of confidence in Tafen. He there. is. I mean, they know each other. Joshua's have been around a long time as well. He's very familiar with this sort of uh, stage of a tournament, and he has obviously got great f confidence in his friend Tafen. So one one, Tom. There was again some side decking going on there. I'm guessing that's to do with who's going first this time. Would you would you anticipate that uh, yeah, Tafen so will be starting? Oh yeah. Uh, we saw the the drawn lock birds come out from Ping. So, I mean, Dron Lockbird, not an optimal card against Altergeist, but so powerful in combination with Reincarnation that it's probably worth keeping in just in case you can cheese a win. Okay. With uh, double Reincarnation, Dron and Lock, take away your opponent's hand combo. And so, just side those out because you're not going to do that going second. So, I mean, they are evenly matched in Ping's deck. And honestly, Tafen, barring the... So he's got three Mind Crush and one Solemn Judgment. So, I love Solemn Judgment. It's a good card. I used to I love, love playing too. three. I'm not sure about it against Trickstar, you know. It seems well, a bit dangerous. It, those life points of those yours life points, they would do be go a shame away. if something happened to them. But he has got the Mind Crush. Um, so this is a thing now. This is how much guts you have. Because if, if Ping just says enter battle phase... Tafen's got to think about whether he wants to flip that mind crush Has or not. Has he drawn evenly? No, but you can still enter your battle phase even if you don't have an evenly matched in your hand. It does claim he's got a decode talker in his hand. I'm guessing that's a little error. I don't think he's got a decode talker no, in his hand. No, he has not. Let's have a little we look. We saw two copies of Heavy Storm Duster in Tafen's hand. Those are good cards. Stops the light stages coming off. The Solemn Strike and the Mind Crush as well. So lots of cards that interrupt your opponent there. Indeed. I'm interested to see how this plays out. That light stage, probably not going to go through. We I think the duster really has to hit that light stage. Ooh, it's it doesn't. It's resolving. Do I we expect the twin twisters to come down soon, Tom? Yeah. Well, the thing about this is mine crush... Twin Twister being chained to Mind Crush is utterly devastating here. Because Ping's going to lose those two sets to the Twin. And then Mind Crush is going to miss. Um, because he's just discarded the card that was in his hand. So now Ping's going to have to like discard a card. That seems like a huge play from Ping. So if, if that multi-faker is hit, then Tafen is left with only a Heavy Storm Duster. 
Uh, so it really depends on where the ping hits the multi-faker. He, oh, he does. Has. He does, so and the huge. crowd erupts here. So that exactly multi-faker the otherwise card. would have left Altergeist and Tafun with a chance to make some pushes back. But without that, I mean, Tafun doesn't know that the only he card draws. he's got is Heavy Storm Duster. So Tafun just flicking flicking over the reincarnation. So what he can do with the reincarnation, so he's, he's decided to use the reincarnation before um, before summoning the licorice so he can summon the Candina back with the reincarnation, bounce it to his hand and get its useful summoning effect. And I think Ping's Ping, going to be pretty confident Ping now. is looking really confident. He's just play after play. But we see that no, spoofing. 200 whopping damage from Candina. Has he got a spoofing? Was that... That's what? a Heavy Storm Duster. Oh, right Heavy there. Storm Duster, sorry. So the other card is Altergeist Protocol. So unfortunately, for Altergeist Traps, they do need other Altergeist cards in order for them to work. Okay. And he, does, he doesn't have any other cards, let alone Altergeist cards. So it's not looking ideal for Tafen right now. He's more or less got one turn with which to draw a card that he needs to use. Does he... He doesn't have any cards in hand, so he's just got the he's one just card set on the to top the of field. His deck. Yeah. So let's see what he draws, Tom. So to my mind, he wants to see we a go. Faker. He wants to see a Marionetta. Um, he drew a monster card. Oh, that is a, I think it's a Malaseek. Yes, it is. I don't know whether Malaseek... I, I mean, it, it lets him carry on playing. I don't know whether it is enough to get him all the way back into the game, but we will find out. But it definitely... Definitely not the worst draw. Okay. There were a number of draws that would have caused. So he's him just still to he's keeping he's up. He's trying to in. keep up with this, isn't he? What Interesting. He chose not to link it away. Um, and we see a scapegoat there. So I don't know what Ping is thinking right now. So he might be thinking it's a spoofing, mm -hmm. but I think if it's a spoofing, Tafen would have activated it. So he's maybe got he's got a read that it's a protocol. Because I can't see many other reasons not just to link it away into a Link Karibo. Unless well, he's it's having a, a think. He's definitely having a think. But it looks like he's, so if he's going to activate the, protocol, the mind control. Then he will activate the mind control. But what do you do with the monster? I mean, it stops him using protocol. And there it is. There's is he just going to attack for 1,600 damage? It was a spoofing. That's kind of unreasonable. Of I swear that said protocol. I thought it was spoofing but it, it says protocol it does but it's a spoofing they lied to us it happens from time to time nothing we can do about it so there you see the summon I'm interested why Tafen didn't play that last turn and how do we feel about that is that gonna is that changing the momentum well that's shocked me because i thought it was a protocol <laughs> because it said on the screen that it was a protocol i'm not sure why t i mean it's a good card for tafen to have i still don't know why he didn't play it last turn will it really will it stop ping from moving forward in this match um well he's got the scapegoat so it will be a setback but i think ping will be happy enough to have the scapegoat um so this Tafen is really draws. back and forth. The draw it's of Tafen is really important here again. And it's when you're down to so few cards, Heavy Storm Duster is not not. He didn't want to see that because Ping. I mean, it could be if Ping were to draw uh, a ring, uh, not a reincarnation, a uh, Light Stage, then having that Heavy Storm Duster will be super clutch. But at the moment, Ping's not got any spells and traps. So what's the point in having something which destroys spells and traps? And you can really feel the tension here in the room. There's murmurs all over the place. Yeah, I can't really. This could go, really go either way. Um, this is what it's all about. Game three of the semi-final of YCS London. And we see Tafun moving into that Link Summon with Link Karibo there. He then brings out the Marionetta, is it? Yeah, that's a Marionetta. It's going to get him an extra trap. Uh, he can't use multi-faker effect here, so maybe we should inform the table judge. I'm sure Can the judges will the pick up judge? on that. Yeah, he definitely can't use the effect of multi-faker. So multi the judges faker. should be picking up on that. Should we just check multi-faker before we try and inform any table judges? So it says you cannot special summon monsters the turn you activate this effect except altergeist monsters, but he tried to special summon Link Karibo. So can we inform the table judge, Ollie? Can we inform the table judge? 
that he can't use the effect of multi-faker this turn. Tom is absolutely on fire when it comes to spotting things in the match. That is exactly why we have him here at this desk. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen now. I mean, maybe I was wrong, but I'm pretty sure that he shouldn't have been able to use the effect of multi-faker because he summoned a link Karibo. But so we're unfortunately, Ping plays so fast. <laughs> <laughs> the judges are discussing it. But play is proceeding, so maybe he Maybe can. I read something wrong. All is okay. We get the thumbs up from the judges. If this card is special summoned, you can special summon one Altergeist monster from your deck in defense mode. No, I don't think you can do that. Um, all right. Or maybe I've missed well, play something. is proceeding. And we see a lot of cards on um, Tafin's ta side of the field now. So Taven set up a lot of interruptions, uh, and we'll see what Pink can do about it. So let's he has see what three Pink cards in his hand. He Pink has drew for turn evenly matched. Is I mean, it could go through. Here's the thing. I mean, if he uh, if he makes a nightmare unicorn, and that gets negated, then the evenly matched could come through. But Pink's not really got that much going for himself. So I guess we'll find out. It's deep thought now. This is really on edge. So, I mean, the problem he's got here is if he tries to use the effect of a Nightmare Monster, it will just get negated by the protocol. So if he makes Cerberus, then Cerberus won't be destroyed, at least. Um, but its effect will still probably be negated by protocol. And we see he does summon the Cerberus there. So he can at least destroy the driver. Uh, it can at least get rid of that driver. Well, use it for something useful. Targeting the Silquitus. So, I mean, he could just chain the spoofing. He could chain the protocol. He's got multiple options here. Targeting the... I, I, I think chaining the spoofing is probably the most reasonable response, and I think it's the one Tafen's considering. Just checking that Ping won't get a draw in the event that the Silkertus is no longer on the field, which I think is correct. Um, maybe the judges are now catching up that he couldn't make that play last turn. I don't know what they're going to do, though, because it's been quite a long time. So they are now pointing to the Link Karibo. I think that's what they're discussing. I mean, maybe I made a mistake, but I don't think so. I think it was just... He summoned Link Karibo and then used the effect of Multifaker, which you, you can't do. Uh, Ping, Ping tapping himself on the head, saying that he shouldn't have missed that. So I don't know what's going to happen right now. Well, they're just having a discussion, guys. So while that's happening, let's analyze where we're at, Tom. It's 1-1. One, one. It's 1-1. One, one. I mean, it was it's so really back difficult and to forth. tell what happens if this game gets rewound, rewound, because it could get rewound quite a long way. Um, to what the game was before. I mean, Ping's played a card from his hand, so I'm not sure how you can really repair the game because Ping's already shown him the... Information. It, yeah, he's shown him the driver from his hand. Um, Tafen didn't know what he drew. I, don't, I honestly, I'm not a judge. I don't know what the sort of protocol is in this situation. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. I mean, if the game carries on from here, I would be backing Tafen um, to take the game from here but I don't know if the game will carry on from here um, well as mentioned the judges are discussing it we're just looking. everyone's on edge looking on anxiously I mean it is to how top four, so I think the um, the head judge would probably be involved because you want to make sure it's a significant the correct decision decision is uh, applied the ruling on the table is going to be a game loss for Tafen I've been told I mean, the game is hard to repair from here. Exactly. So I, I would. Is, it it is does reasonable. seem that the game state oh, is, a, on. is a little difficult. But it's Typhoon is motioning. Pin is na Ping is also talking back. Hang so. On. Okay. The game's going to be rewound a long, long way. Fortunately. Because of the, because uh, it's a feature match, the judges can completely rewind the game. Um, yeah, it looks like that is indeed. 
So the only thing, yeah, the only possible missing piece is um, what Ping drew for his turn. Um, and the fact that he sh showed him the, the driver. But I guess we'll have to wait and see what the Indeed. judges decide. So I think we're just going to wait and see what is the the decision. I mean, it's a really complicated situation. Yep. It looked to me to be a fairly innocent mistake from Tafe, and he was playing very fast as the top four. Easy thing to forget um, when you use the, the multi-faker. I mean, it, you caught it quite quickly. Is that something that you're, you've seen slip up before? I mean, like, multi-faker's a powerful card, right? It's got this restriction on it for a reason. So I think I was going to like, hang on a second, you know, this doesn't quite work. Um, I don't I mean, I'm not sure. And they were, I mean, playing, maybe. they were playing quickly. Yeah, I mean, Ping plays very fast. But both players. Both players were playing at a very reasonable pace. I mean, it, um, it is also Ping's responsibility to make sure that players play oh, correctly. It's absolutely. It's both players' responsibility to maintain the game state okay. at all times. So it looks like the game's just going to continue from the same situation. So, so it'd be we nice can if we take you back to the back table. To the game. Okay, so fortunately, yeah, the judges have been able to repair the game. I'm just hoping the game will uh, will will cut back to the the game because at the moment the camera's on us. And, and it should be said, the judges, you know, where possible, they really do try their best to make sure the game is, you know, carries on from the spot at which there was a slight procedural error. And I must say. It's nice to see that. So well done to the team here. It's, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice it's to be able to carry on the top game four. as possible. It's top four at YCS, and you know if the judges are able to repair the game state in that manner, as a player, that's really significant because you don't want to walk away with a negative experience. Yeah, Tafer. Not in a top four. Going to have a big sigh of relief there, I think. So now we've got to think about what's going to go on here. Um, I mean, tafen has got. I mean, he's still in a. His, his situation is not as good as it was before, just having that one less monster. But he's still got. Um, yeah, Ping having a big think here. Because, I mean, Tafen's still got that protocol. He's still got all the options, really. Um, and Ping is definitely thinking this through, isn't he? Yeah, this is the slowest I've seen him play. <laughs> yep, I think he's aware. Um, I mean, the, the, the Cerberus doesn't really bait anything out. Because the Cerberus will just get, um, it will just, it, the target will just get spun back by protocol. So instead, he's just going to use the protection effect of Cerberus um, in order to protect the Phoenix when he activates the effect of Phoenix. So now Phoenix uh, is slightly more threatening. And he's looking at that spoofing. So this is a tough decision for Tafer now. Um, And I'm again, you can really feel the tension, can't you? Both so players. Yeah, he's got to be careful about how he resolves this chain. Because um, he wants, to, he really wants to have a trap to be able to resolve, uh, to be able to add a multi-faker and then use the effect of multi-faker. But because he's just flipped that protocol, he's not really going to have a good situation in which to flip his... Oh, he just tributes someone to Cyber Dragon. <laughs> Oh, he can fuse it for Mega Fleet Dragon. That's super cool. This Mega Fleet Dragon might just take the game for ping. I don't think there's anything Tafen. I did not see that coming, but that is amazing. Yeah, that is. And there that it is. That is 4,000 damage, and I don't think Tafen can stop it. That was a super slick play. He's oh, doing hang on a second. He has got the Heavy Storm Duster, and Heavy Storm Duster can destroy some of his own cards. So when the attack comes through, yeah, he can use spoofing, put back the faker, then use heavy storm so duster on his own card. So he's not out yet. So he's just carrying on here. He's got to use heavy storm duster on his own card, so he can use the the spoofing. I think the judge is just checking that heavy storm duster can be used on your own card. This is pretty back and forth. And it's um, brilliant play from both players. You I see did really not see that Cyber Dragon coming down to clear the Link Karibo and threaten to attack the game. Fantastic vision from Ping there. And 
again, likewise from Tafin with the play okay, on his own He definitely own cards. can't do that. <laughs> he just tried to do it again. <laughs> Trying to summon Linkariba again in the second. <laughs> um, no, yeah. So Ping gonna, he had to do it then because he couldn't take the damage. So he'd already taken the 2400 damage. Presumably, yeah, the Phoenix gonna clear off and Tafin gonna be left with nothing. <laughs> Nothing. He's got a monster on board that's threatening game. This is pretty tense. Ping's got no cards left. So we're just down unicorn. to top decks at this we're stage. We're down to top decks. As far as I can tell, tafen has got two top decks, which are Marionette. And there's and the handshake. Ping with right the wing. And Ooh. you can see what it means that was super to both intense. of them. But that was unbelievable play there. Let's talk about play from Ping, it. It really was. Let's talk about it a little bit more in the post match analysis. What a match, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm extremely, extremely excited following so the... Excited. I can't. I don't think you've waited for the go sign yet. The <laughs> that play in that final ma game, Tom. Oof. Unbelievable. That really took me by surprise. I really wasn't expecting... Didn't see the Cyber Dragon. Really Ping putting enough pressure on his opponent to force... The, you know, if, if Tafin had just had more life points and hadn't been forced to use the Duster on his own turn then and there, had that one extra turn to get his plays going... But we he just would have been able to come back. But we just didn't see either of those. Of well, the play from Ping was phenomenal. We really didn't see that coming. But then it's just knowing the int how all those micro interactions uh, work. You know, Tafun sending away his own card in order to stay in the game. That one extra turn. One extra turn gave him that one extra chance to draw his out. And I must say, I think the crowd thoroughly enjoyed that one. That was very tense. Yeah. There was a huge roar at the end there. Ping, obviously the home player. Let's recap from the beginning. If you sit, if we talk a little bit about game one, you, we saw that um, we saw that the game was a little slow to get going. It was super dominant from Tafer in that yeah. game one. Imperial order plus alter guys cards. I think that really says no to Trickstar. It, it was just shutting down options for Ping. Yeah, once I mean you see Imperial order against a deck with 22 spell cards in it. That's that's pretty like half your deck can't do anything and then game two it was a <laughs> that, <laughs> that, was that evenly matched i think was the i just i just the, the fact that he he, he the, mind the mind crush, crush showed him the two evenly matched said i've got this card what are you gonna do and then he played it and it's like ha you know but, but it was just <laughs> you know oh, there was, was a level of well you've seen my hand but you're still gonna get that <laughs> you're gonna feel you this can evenly see my matched. Hand. now what are you gonna do yep. nothing yeah yep and then game three, that, that was, was that was really intense. That was awesome. It was tense for those guys, for us, and for the fans watching. It was so back and forth, so back and forth. And obviously, we really enjoyed those plays at the end. Very Just the creative thinking. I was very impressed by that. Yeah. On both counts, well done to the judges as well for being able to resolve that issue we had mid-game. Um, enough being said, there it is. Ping Zhao, the home player makes it to the final of YCS London. We're going to head over for an interview now with Oliver German. See you next time. Yeah, we're back with Ping Xiao. He's becoming a regular on the main stage here at YCS London. Congratulations. Thank you. What a crazy match. What was going on? That was nerve-wracking. Oh my god, that was nerve-wracking. So, the, the first game seemed everything was going your way, basically. Um, it started quite well for you, and then if I remember correctly, he turned it around, right? I could not deal. Well, I mean, I mean, on my part, I made probably two mistakes. I'm pretty sure YouTube will find more. But at the end of the day, I, I just could not deal with that continuous trap card. I cannot stop him from summoning Modi Faker every turn. Right. So um, you take that early loss. You go to side decking again. Um, how many times did you play against Alter Guys this weekend? This is my fourth Alter Guys matchup. All right, so you have some experience with the matchup. Uh, what did you side then? Twin Twister, triple evening match as, as my going first card. <laughs> I know, right? Well, why not? I mean, apparently it works. So um, the second game, tell us a little bit more about it. I opened double evening, I opened double evening match with a terraforming. My game plan was simple. Summon one monster, make him out of that one monster, and then just evening match him next turn for four. And... Did that work exactly in your favor? With the exception of Mind Crush taking out two of my 
two of my engages, it worked exactly like I planned. All right. So you basically tie the score. It's 1-1 one, one now, and you're going into the last duel, basically. Um, what is happening in your head? Am I going to get Inspector Border stunned? <laughs> and when that did not happen? When that did not happen, it was a matter of I have the t I opened the Twin Twister, so I have and he didn't have anti spell, so I need to bait out the Imperial Order. Right. Turned out it was a mind crush, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was some bad luck on Typhoon's part where he discarded <laughs> discarded the multi faker. Yeah. yeah, that that situation with multi faker in the last game obviously um, hard to make sense of. Uh, both of you are playing very fast for the most part. Um, what was that like for you at the table? It was both, it, in, in Typhoon's defense, it was a complex game state, we were playing both fast, it was probably both our fault, but the game, as you can see, it was repairable. Yeah. I mean, thank God and thank goodness the judge saw it, so there wasn't really any change. Yeah. However, that one go token made a huge difference for me. Right. <laughs> right, absolutely. Did you see that coming? You were basically, I got this already, and then suddenly he pulls another rabbit out of his hat. I was not expecting the last card in hand to be another continuous trap, so... Um, that was one of his outs. I did see it coming. I just didn't think he had it. He was not showing. He was not giving away. Is it fair to say that this was your hardest match this weekend? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. After some consideration, that's a clear yes. All right. You got the hometown advantage. Um, you're going up against in the finals against either somebody from Italy or from Australia. Um, who would you be wanting to face? I don't honestly mind. You're taking them all? Mm-hmm, of course. All right, guys. The hometown hero, Ping Xiao, please give it up. <laughs> there we go. There we go, yeah. All right. It's going to be interesting to see. So you don't have a preference, but I can uh, spill the beans. It's going to be an all-time classic. It's going to be Italy versus the UK in the finals of YCS London. We've seen Italy take the title in the UK before with Marcello Barberi. I don't think we've ever had a champion from the UK who won in, in YCS London, if I'm not mistaken. So is that going to change today? That's fine now. The 50 -50, there's literally a 50-50 chance, if you guys know what I mean. All right, guys, you just heard it from Ping. He doesn't seem very convinced. So I'm going to ask the home crowd. I hope there's some guys from the UK here. Is the UK going to win this weekend? OK, I think Italy got this one in the back. All right, guys, we're going to take another quick break and then we're going to be back with the finals of YCS London 2018.